Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically accessing PostgreSQL databases. What is the agenda of this part number three? There are four items. We're going to be talking about the project. We are going to be talking about the three different categories that I like to categorize or use to categorize accessing databases the actual demo of the last two packages and a discussion about the trade-offs that we can that we have when choosing any of these packages and the final and actually the final conclusion the project itself as you may know already is a web service we're using the imdb uh, data set specifically names and we are using postgresql if you recall the three ways that I like to categorize databases or accessing databases in Postgres is using plain SQL packages, using ORM and ORM-like packages. And finally, the, the last category will be using a SQL statement builder, which in this case will be Squirrel, and using a code generator, which in this case will be SQL C. And you can argue that the other packages like SQL builder is also a code generator, but the way I categorize, I differentiate these two is that with SQL C, you need to explicitly tell it what to do and what to generate. With SQL Builder, it just takes all the tables that you have in your database and it, well, depending on the configuration, and it just it generates that for you. With that being said, uh, let's jump into seeing what SQL Builder, I'm sorry, what the Squirrel and SQL C are all about. Starting with a Squirrel, a Squirrel is a fluent SQL generator for Go. What this means is that you have a builder depending on the instruction that you're trying to use in in the database. Either I select an update and insert and, and those kind of things. And then from there you use uh, that builder for generating the SQL statement that you need to generate. You pass in the columns, you need to pass in the, the, the table, you need to pass in some sort of a query instructions or conditions, and then you can either execute that SQL statement by passing in a database that is instantiated using your no normal standard library, or you can get the actual, the actual SQL statement, the actual string as is, and then build your own or uh, execute your own code either using query context or exec or any, or any of those available that are also part of the standard library. In the code that I have right here, there is a new file called Postgres Squirrel that does exactly what I was just telling you. There is a new instantiation or of the database that we're trying to use. It's opening the database using the standard library. If you notice, it's right here. It's using the normal standard library for opening using the Postgres driver and the database URL that we have been using for a while. Down here is is the section where it's actually using the Squirrel uh, API, where we are selecting a specific columns from this concrete table, and we are indicating the conditions that we need to use for selecting the record that we need to select. It's using explicitly this the dollar placeholder for the params that we're going to be passing in. So this is, uh, question mark uh, gets converted it into a dollar one because it's the only argument that we have. In case we have more, it will be a sequential number of dollar-like uh, uh, parameters, and we're passing in the database that I instantiated right here. And similarly to your standard library package, it does a scan that then uses, receives fields or variables um, that then are populated with the results that we indicated originally in the previous statement. So nCons is populated with the value of nCons, primary name or name with primary name and so on and so forth. So it's similar to using database SQL the only difference is that in cases where we are trying to build uh, dynamic queries, uh, you don't have to manually use the strings package, for example, and manipulate those values to avoid SQL injections. The package itself right here, Squirrel, is doing that for you. In the end, the code that you, you, you build when you're using Squirrel is a little bit cleaner because everything is more or less 
less complicated with a bunch of, like I said, a bunch of string concatenations. And I think this is where the package uh, shines. You can have complex logic for creating queries that are dynamically generated using something much more explicit than using a string concatenation. But in the end, it's practically the same as using a database SQL, the standard package. If we jump into the other one, which is SQL C, I do like this one a lot because it allows you to generate a full type safe idiomatic Go code. What this means in practice is that you need to explicitly tell SQL C the SQL statements that you're going to be using for either inserting, updating, or whatever other option supported by Postgres. And then SQL C will take those statements and we generate type safe Go code. It doesn't generate anything that you don't tell it to generate, which is something that I do like. Everything is really, really explicit. Not only that, but it also determines the right types to use when generating that type safe Go code. So if the table is a nullable var chart, for example, it will generate, as you may expect, a pointer to a string field for, for the actual scan or for the arguments when you are trying to use those values in your queries. Also, it, it determines if the actual uh, statements that you have in your queries are valid because it's actually trying to compile the results, not the values, using the PostgreSQL database engine. So if you have, for whatever reason, maybe a syntax error, it will fail right there. And that is extremely useful when trying, when building code that for whatever reason, it may be uh, invalid. If you jump into the code, you will see that we have a SQL C file that is a referring to the code that is auto-generated by this compiler. In the readme, there is this new instruction for installing the SQL C compiler. And also, it's important that it's right here, it's generating the code that we're going to be using for calling the values from the database. The way it works is that there is a SQL C YAML file that is, is used as a configuration. And that one receives uh, the two things that are the most important ones are uh, this query folder path, path and the DB migrations path. And what it does is that it takes the query path to generate a names, to generate the actual types and instructions that you need to generate depending on whatever needs you have. So specifically for this one, what we're going to be building is a function that returns one value and is using this instruction that I've been using for a while for all the previous examples and is receiving a an argument called nconst that then in the end will be populated back to the actual Go type. And because I told you that it uses the database engine coming from Postgres, it actually has to receive all the schema that we are using for the migrations and is compatible with the previous uh, the Golang migrate uh, tool that we have been using for a while already. So thanks to that, it knows exactly what types to use and it knows exactly how to map those types back to, to go and back and forth. In reality, when you run the SQL C generate, what it does is it generates a bunch of files automatically, specifically these models that is equivalent to the, uh, the, the types that we are defining in the SQL files, and as well as a, the instructions that we are, again, explicitly indicating in the SQL file itself. So if you notice, the SQL statement is literally equivalent to the one I have right here and it is being called right here. All of this is auto-generated, so we don't have to write any of this manually. And it looks exactly like if we were using database uh, SQL, it does the scan for us and whatnot. So it's practically the same, it's just saving us a bunch of um, boilerplate that we don't have to write manually. Calling this uh, auto-generated code is literally just doing something like instantiating or passing in the database that we instantiated previously using your norm normal SQL 
uh, standard library in instantiation, passing in the requirements, the parameters that we need, depending on the query that we define, and then finally returning those values back to the user. In server, which I didn't show this before, there are three, the, the part three of this video that corresponds to this video. It, it includes two new endpoints, one of them called Squirrel and one of them called SQL C that we will be able to access. And if we go and run this server, you will notice that uh, we do a curl, get HTTP localhost 8080, and then we copy, I don't know, let's copy, where are you? Right here, we couple the name ID, and I can recall exactly what it was a good, uh, Ah, I have it right here. So if I do a SQL C, it's exactly the same. And if I use a squirrel, it will work the same. So in practice, like I was telling you last time, for the end user or our customers, it doesn't really matter what package we use, where it matters for us which one we use because that will affect how fast or slow we are building the software that we're supposed to build, which is the perfect segue for the last discussion. The conclusion of this video. So you might be wondering what are the best packages to use then for connecting and accessing PostgreSQL databases. And for me, that is hard to tell, but I, before m making a suggestion, I want you to, to look at the different options we have to consider when selecting anything in general, because as you know already, everything is about trade-offs. And we need to consider those trade-offs before making a choice. What are the trade-offs when using SQL database? Well, it's most likely slower to write the code. You need to know a little bit more about SQL itself. You need to explicitly indicate, because it's, it's, everything is manual, you need to explicitly indicate how to scan the results. You need to select correctly the fields uh, the field types or the variable types as well as when sending those to Postgres and when receiving those back when when doing any queries So in the end it's a little bit slower, but you know for sure that everything But you know for sure that everything is efficient and performant nothing is uh, Magic or happening behind the scenes everything's explicitly indicated in the code now Will you choose an ORM? Well, that depends on, on the experience of the team, on yourself, how much experience you have, how much time you have to build what's supposed to be, you're supposed to be building, the actual deadline. And also, if it is something that is a service that is going to be only used as a demo, nobody's going to be using it really, perhaps it makes sense to use an ORM or something that is auto-generated by default. And you don't have to worry too much about the actual boilerplate that is needed. No matter what you decide to do, I personally recommend you to, do a, to document that decision and you explicitly indicate somewhere, maybe in a readme in your repository or somewhere that says, okay, you know what? Because of the deadline is in two days, I decided to use GORM. I understand this most likely we needs to be revisited in the future. And I think that perhaps in the future we need to use SQL C and explicit database SQL uh, calls to, I don't know, something like that. The idea is that it's clear what you made the decision and, and you, you may need to revisit it if needed in the near future. My own choices are depending again on all those previous items that I mentioned before is that I usually go with SQL C because I know exactly what are the instructions that I need to generate. Um, I use a scroll in case of we need to generate dynamic code. But it, it ideally, and most of the times, a squirrel could be replaced easily with um, use strings concatenation. Again, making sure that the placeholders are explicitly indicated to avoid any SQL injections. And in those cases, I like to use PGX instead of using libq because libq, like I mentioned previously, um, is no longer recommended as the default driver for, for Postgres. Those are the options I have and the options I can recommend you. 
and and again these are again like everything in software development is about trade-offs you need to make a choice you need to measure measure that choice and then adjust depending of of whatever metrics you recorded or you're seeing so just keep evolving and improving your code as you go and with that thank you for watching and i will talk to you next time until then you know keep it up okay don't give up see you